This is The Real News, and I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. From Britain, George Osborne, the country's chancellor or finance minister, recently announced a new round of austerity measures totaling some $41 billion, including $20 billion in cuts to welfare over the next two years. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. If 2014 is a year of hard truths for our country, then it starts with this one. Britain should never return to the levels of spending of the last government. We'd either have to return borrowing to the dangerous levels that threatened our stability, or we'd have to raise taxes so much we'd put our country out of business. Government is going to have to be permanently smaller, and so too is our welfare system. Thanks to the BBC for that footage. Now joining us to discuss this is John Weeks. He's a professor emeritus and senior researcher at the Center for Development Policy and Research, Research on Money, and Finance Group at the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Always a pleasure. So Professor Weeks, um, George Osborne and his supporters, they point to um, improving jobs numbers and improving housing market, um, overall um, some improving economic indicators that this uh, path of austerity has worked. And England and the Britain were, was one of the first states to adopt this back in 2010. Um, what is your response to these arguments? And what, what is the impact going to be on, on the uh, British society? Well, um, I'll begin by saying that um, George Osborne never took an economics course in his life, but I fear that if he had, he would be even worse because economics has turned to be a very reactionary subject. Um, the first point to make is the most recent information data that has come in from the Office of National Statistics of Britain, of Britain suggests that the recovery is not as strong as George Osborne says. About three months ago, I and another uh, um, ancient professor, a uh, fellow from Leeds, Hugo Radici, and I wrote an article in which we said that we did not think the uh, uh, recovery would be sustained, and people derided us and said, uh, you know, your people on the left should just recognize that uh, uh, the recovery is coming and stop trying to pretend it's not. Well, it's possible that we might be uh, vindicated. Second point to make is what George Osborne is bragging about is 1% growth, 1% annual growth. He's hoping it'll be two, but to date it is 1%. I mean, if that's something to brag about, we have very low expectations indeed. Next point to make is about employment. The British um, Office of Statistics that I uh, mentioned previously produces very detailed data on employment, as in the United States, and the information is quite clear. Most of the growth of employment has been part-time. And surveys, again, official surveys by the government of people in part-time, when they are asked, would you prefer to work full-time, would you prefer to long, work longer hours, the overwhelming proportion of them, about 70%, say yes. So what we're getting is a recovery uh, based on shifting full-time employment to part-time employment. Now, I suppose it's better to have a part-time job than to have no job. But again, this does not greatly give a great deal of confidence about the recovery. And the housing market, they talk a lot about the housing market. Most of the increases and in booming prices in uh, Britain are in the south of the country, the southeast London, southeast. This is an area in which the demand from overseas buyers is extremely high. London housing market is driven by wealthy people from the Middle East, from China, <coughs> from uh, other uh, wealthy countries, less so the United States all the time. So this is not a housing market which reflects the general recovery of the country, it reflects other factors. So I'm not saying there is no recovery, but I will say that uh, it will be interesting when the next set of uh, statistics come in 
which will be in about um, a week. We'll know what happened in the fourth quarter of uh, 2013. And until then, we can say with confidence, it is a very slow recovery, the slowest recovery on record. We are now you know, almost four years since the austerity policies began and the economy is growing at 1%. That is unprecedented. There has never been a recovery that lagged more than about 13 quarters. That is, that's about um, uh, three years. <laughs> so we're far, far behind what is normal. So I would say don't get too enthusiastic about, uh, uh, about the recovery, about what uh, George, uh, George Osborne is um, uh, bragging about. The second point is the austerity po policies are completely unnecessary. It's not, you know, frequently, frequently you use a cliche when you're trying to be um, understanding and open-minded, you say, no one is wrong all the time. George Osborne, George Osborne is wrong all the time. He's wrong about everything. Uh, austerity is not necessary. Britain does not have a large uh, deficit. It does not have a large uh, public debt. The deficit, to the extent that it is being closed as a proportion of GNP, and it is getting a bit smaller, not very much smaller. That is a result of this extremely slow growth of the economy. The economy grows, tax revenues come in, <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> uh, the deficit as a consequence uh, uh, declines. More people are employed, so they're kicked off the unemployment rolls, you pay less unemployment. <coughs> it's a very simple relationship. Actually, in absolute terms, Osborne's borrowing now, adjusted for inflation, is no less than it was under uh, when labor went out. So he's made no progress whatsoever in the absolute deficit. He's made some progress in the relative deficit, that is the deficit relative to G GDP, relative to national income. And the reason he has is because the economy has grown a little bit. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for joining us at The Real News Network.